Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here, and we got a special treat for you today. We have our friends from Pop Store up in our studio. This is Matt. Matt, uh, you guys have an upcoming auction coming up. There's a little different flavor than we yes. usually do. Yeah, usually, you know, we're Prop Store, we do props and costumes. We've been getting into posters the past couple years. This is gonna be our first toy auction, so we're very excited to kind of start getting into that field, too. So. That is definitely a collectible category that you can go deep in. Exactly, right? yeah. From places like Star Wars Celebration, mm -hmm. to just even swap meets and vintage collectors, like Star Wars, which is what you have here. Yes. There's a lot of Star Wars stuff out mm -hmm. there. Yeah, and even, uh, this is a two day live auction. The first day is almost completely Star Wars and there will still be some Star Wars stuff at the end of the second day. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've been around kind of the toy community as prop store professionally for a while uh, to the point where a lot of us started with collecting toys and we've been going to celebration, that type of thing. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun to getting into that world and, uh, and kind of seeing the infrastructure in place, seeing the grading companies, seeing uh, the various different types of prototype or uh, foreign variants or, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. It's been, mm -hmm. been eye-opening uh, for all of us, I think. It's been cool. In the toy collecting world and specifically in the Star Star Wars tour collecting world. There are a lot of interesting stories, apocryphal stories, <laughs> those like legendary things about yes. certain figures, certain variants, things that happen maybe in the prototyping phase. Mm -hmm. Do you see glimpses of that represented in, in this auction? Absolutely. The cool thing with Star Wars too is that the toys were kind of so tied into it early on. You know, that, that first uh, early bird special that a lot of people will yep. know about what I yep. mean when I'm talking about that. Um, even to the point where a few of the pieces I brought here are Boba Fett. Ah, Boba Fett's yes. introduction to the world is very much tied to the toy line. So it's cool to kind of see those little pieces of it, um, especially knowing where Star Wars has gone now, uh, to see where it started early on in relation to the toys and the marketing of it. I was flipping through the catalog earlier, and this is something that you can just download the PDF of. Yes, yeah, and hard website. copies, yep. Um, and there are almost like a thousand items here. Where do these objects come from? Yeah, just a bunch of different collectors, you know? Um, whether it's uh, someone who's been collecting props and costumes, uh, or we went to a bunch of toy shows and met a lot of new collectors. Um, even kind of old friends of Prop Store, we have uh, just shy of a hundred lots in the auction from Howard Kassanjan, who was a big uh, producer. He produced um, Raise of the Lost Ark, Return of mm -hmm. the Jedi, um, and now has a lot of pieces in the auction here, and he's getting involved. He's gonna do a talk back the day before the auction on the 27th, you know, so it'll be it'll be exciting to see it all. Though. So even, the, even people who were connected to the production of yes. these films maybe were in the room when Kenner was pitching products, right. when prototypes were happening. Oh my God, that would be, it's been really cool to hear those stories. <laughs> exactly, yeah, get all the samples and the stuff maybe that got cut and never made it to yeah. market, you know, that type of thing. Totally. Well, what we have here, what you guys were able to bring were yes. a few items. I definitely want to hear about these. Uh, where do you want to start? Um, I don't know. These are probably the most recognizable for a lot of people. I mean, uh, what we're looking at here is a three-pack uh, variant of just Han, Leia, and Kenobi. These are the same figures that you would have gotten, you know, in the early bird special just by themselves. The, what makes it rare is that they're in this three pack. Mm. Um, they were only made for a certain number of department stores, like you could only get certain three packs at certain places. The fact that this is in such good condition, obviously it's been graded, it's preserved for a while, makes it very rare. But if you and I were to break in the glass and pick it out, yeah. just the same figure. You know, like that was uh, an eye-opening thing for us of just, the fact that it's the same product, but the way it's packaged makes it that much more valuable. You mentioned grading, and it's just like trading cards or yeah, comic books, exactly. where there are institutions out there who rate them, and those, these are sealed. And I can see, you know, from the AFA, this yep. is it's rated a, a numerical score, an 80, 90, you mm -hmm. know, and something maybe even rated like this. It's rated, it looks like a 60, but it's so rare that. That's a really good quality version. Exactly, okay. yeah. This is a very rare piece, actually. This is a Boba Fett. Um, like I was saying, you know, Boba Fett was kind of introduced in the Christmas special that we're not supposed to talk about. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Here in the US, Boba Fett was a mail-away piece. You'd send in four proofs of purchase, and you could get your free Boba Fett. Whereas this version was a French version from uh, Meccano, was the manufacturer and they were just on retail. You know, like we're over here in the US sending all these uh, proofs of purchase in to get our free ticket. They're just going to a store and picking up Boba Fett and going home, you know? The kids in France weren't disappointed by the promise of the rocket right. launcher. They and, never knew. They never know? knew. They saw, they knew it was the fixed one in the back. Yep, yep. And even like in the stores overseas, like the, the form factor is different. Yeah, yeah, that's a big thing about this piece too that it makes it uh, more valuable for collectors. It's on the square back. Generally, it'd be something like a rectangle, like the three-pack that we're seeing here. But the fact that it's a square pack, the fact that it's Boba Fett, just adds more value to it. And obviously, like we were saying, it's graded, it's sealed, it's not 
changing anytime soon, you know. And then you have individual figures, and yeah. so what makes something like this Jawa here a rarity? This Jawa is very cool because this is a uh, vinyl cape Jawa. A lot of people that are watching this video will know what I mean by that. Basically, they only sold this style Jawa with this style cape for a very short amount of time. People started complaining that a Jawa this big and a Luke this big were the same price. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to change that, obviously you're not going to make like a four foot or a five foot Jawa or, right. Jawa or anything. Um, but what they started doing was making these cloth capes and then later on for like figures like Yoda adding accessories to them right. so that you feel that you're getting the same value as something else. Also happened to make it a little more screen accurate, actually adding a cloth cape to it. But because of that, the less accurate vinyl cape Jawa is kind of the holy grail. And that's more rare. Figures. That's so funny. Yep. The thing that was thought to be less valuable right. because it was vinyl ends up being the thing that is more valuable. Enough today. people complain about it and now it's now it's treasure. You know? That's really funny. Yeah. What about this clearly is an R2 leg? Yes, an R2 leg from uh, an early version of like the RC R2 toy that I'm sure a lot of us had different versions of over the years. Uh, this piece is really cool because it is handmade prototype from Kenner's uh, modeling factory. Oh. Um, so what you're seeing here is something that would usually be destroyed after they started actually molding it and making pieces, you know? So the fact that we have this, this piece of it intact uh, straight from, from the Kenner, you know, ultimately is, is makes it a very cool piece. That's a real piece of like the toy development yeah, history. Yeah. We have a lot of pieces like that in the, in the auction, um, even to sketches and figures and box art and things wow. like that. You Early know? sculpts. Yeah, and... that's what I get really excited for, you know, unpainted figures because mm -hmm. they were prototyping still, that type yeah. of thing. Yeah, there's so a great a cool documentary, uh, The Toys That Made Us on yes. Netflix, yeah, yeah, yeah. which like interview some of these very toy developers, mm -hmm. the same ones, and that's really cool to see this in person. Right. Wow. Now, from something that's on the very beginning of the toy development process to something that's way more consumer-facing. Ah, yes. This is like a display piece almost. Yeah, yeah. I brought two up here with me. You got Chewbacca over here too is also a display piece. This one, obviously, is still very tied to the Boba Fett thing, so it makes it even more valuable. Uh, but this is just a bell display. Um, it would have been hanging um, or be secured over uh, the Star Wars display in any department store. And obviously this one with the Boba Fett means that it was kind of in the gearing up to Empire coming out. So right when nobody knows what he is, but he's cool looking and maybe you saw him on Christmas and, and you start mailing away for it. That's like a piece of retail ephemera. Exactly, yeah. We have a lot of things like that. We've got this great uh, speeder bike piece that we've got the whole store display that looks like a little piece of Endor, you know? Yeah, and same with this is chewy. Like this yeah. is not your your just plush chewy. <laughs> no, this, this is... isn't like you know cuddle and go to sleep chewy. It's four um, feet tall. Yeah, this is one of the pieces from Howard's collection. Mm. Uh, so this was a store display model. They were making these like twenty ish, twenty inch versions of him. This one was going to be you know by the display to kind of attract you over to it, um, but never ever offered at retail. So it makes it even more rare that we kind of have it here. Matt, thank you so much for bringing some of this stuff Absolutely. up to our studio. Will some of the stuff be on display at the warehouse? Yes, everything, will, um, not everything, but a lot of the stuff will be on display in the auction room leading up to the day. Um, again, like I said, we're going to have Howard there on the 27th, and the auction is the 28th and March 1st. Um, live in the room, uh, but we'll also have the auction stream uh, and online bidding like we usually do, too. I have to make a trip down there before yeah. then. Check out not only the Star Wars stuff, but also other vintage collectible. Yes, tons of other franchises. You know, if it's a collectible franchise, we've got something in there from it. So. And this auction allows you guys to make another great catalog. So for those of you out there who are fans of just toy history, yeah. I recommend downloading the catalog, picking up the physical catalog, because that's really cool as well. Matt, great to see you. Good to see you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you.